and finally, Klaus, the controversial cult leader. The Umbrella Academy hit paramount success with season two, and fan favorite Klaus Hargreaves has had quite the journey. He's been a junkie, a cult leader, a lover, a soldier, a medium, an occasional commander of the dead, and an all-around wild ride. Show off. For number four, every day is Halloween, and for us fans, every time we see him feels like a holiday treat. We're going to look at his journey up to now, and where the character could go in his rumored spin-off series, as well as The Umbrella Academy Season 3. We've got Season 1, 2, and if we're on point, maybe even Season 3 Umbrella Academy spoilers in this video, so go watch the whole series and come back if you need to. We will be waiting. Hello? Klaus's story so far. Starting from season one, we meet Klaus checking himself out of rehab only to relapse. When he finds out his adoptive papa, Sir Reginald, died, he makes it back to the Hargreaves estate. He reveals even though he's a seance, he can't communicate with the ghost of their dead patriarch or any of the dead for that matter if he's intoxicated, which is why he stays that way all the time. When sober, he talks to his passed-on adoptive brother Ben, which helps him work out his issues. He gets kidnapped and tortured by Cha-Cha and Hazel, which he momentarily seems to enjoy. Oh, I needed that. Oh, that come so on! During that time, we get a glimpse into his dark past, where Sir Reggie put him in solitary confinement to push him to harness his power. He gets saved by Detective Patch and escapes his motel room prison with a time-traveling briefcase stolen from his captors. He travels back in time while busing it all the way to 1968, where he ends up fighting for the US in the Vietnam War. He meets someone, has a tryst, and loses the man he falls in love with in battle, a soldier whom we later come to know as Dave Katz. He gets back to the present wearing Private Katz's dog tags, bathes himself thoroughly, and Diego gives him some tough love. He starts making an effort to feel it to heal it and tries to get clean. Talking to Dave's spirit seems to help, as he's stable enough to counsel Luther and even take him partying. At a nightclub, he gets into a fight, hits his head, and in his unconscious, afterlife-ish dream, he speaks to God He's waiting for you. and deals with his father demon. He gains a compassionate understanding of Sir Reginald, finds out his adopted father actually killed himself, and frees himself of some of his fear of him. Now listen to me, number four. What I'm about to say is of great import. Great import. Klaus then proves himself a useful warrior, channeling the spirit of Ben to overthrow the Temp Aeternalis soldiers and joins in with the family to travel back in time seconds before Allison initiates the end of the world. Season 2 opens with Ben and Klaus crash landing in an alley in 1960. When he and the rest of the Academy eventually find each other in 1963, they form a super team that fights Soviets, taking advantage of all knowledge of the future up to 2019 and having access to an invisible ghost brother. Klaus fills the void inside him with power over others as a cult leader. His new drug of choice, adulation. He seems to be the only one in the fam taking advantage of the wisdom of knowing the future, and walking around like he doesn't have anything new to learn gives him a kind of swagger. That mixed with the spirit of Ben, of course. Whether he's fighting Texans, joyriding, or in the slammer, his spirit never seems to dampen. He then decides to try and convince the now-alive Dave not to go to the war that ultimately leads to his demise in 1968. When he fails to stop his future past lover from enlisting, he relapses again hard, showing he doesn't have it as figured out as his public persona suggests. Dave. Chill. Dave later visits Klaus at his cult's compound, and we find out Dave signed up for the military earlier than he was supposed to according to the old timeline revealing that the Time Traveler's presence is sending history on a new trajectory. We also see that Ben can completely possess Klaus if properly motivated. Like when Number 6 wanted to have a moment with Klaus's cult member Jill, whom he had a crush on. This showed us a new depth to his powers. In the end, Klaus abandons his cult and the Academy exterminates the Temp Aeternalis and returns to April 2nd, 2019 a day after the Apocalypse Suite, to find the Earth is alive and well, as is Sir Reginald and Ben. In the Revelation, we find Sir Reginald started a whole other gang of heroes called the Sparrow Academy, with this new timeline's Ben as its leader. And one of the new group's members is a box. I don't know about you guys, but I need a drink. Yes. And yes, Klaus is a steady alcoholic by the end of Season 2, showing his character has regressed from all his Season 1 growth. 
And this time around, his fellow Academy members are his enablers. If we're gonna start day drinking, we should do it right. I love you so much. <laughs> you Look Like Death, Klaus's spinoff. The comics' creator, Gerard Way, took to the gram to confirm that the graphic novel Tales from the Umbrella Academy, You Look Like Death, is hitting comic book stores September 16, 2020, a spin-off akin to Hazel and Chacha Save Christmas. In this story, Klaus will be 18 and spiritually lost in Hollywood. It looks as though this Tinseltown will be a version of Transylvania as Klaus will be in deep with some vampiric drug lords. Since the city of Lost Angels is somewhere one can easily lose oneself, it is the perfect state Stage to show how Klaus ended up in rehab 10 years later at the beginning of the Apocalypse Suite. It was probably the training ground where the character got his acting chops, which he displayed in the episode Run Boy Run, where he plays Number Five's father. To lay your hands on my son. Cult Leader is also a pretty good job opportunity for Hollywood rejects, right, Charles Manson? Dang. Klaus is the perfect character to take us along in a drug-induced road trip, traveling to Hollywood and getting lit along the way. In the spirit of leaving Las Vegas, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, and any other Las Vegas movie you could think of, we could delve even deeper into the soul of the tortured Hargreaves' middle child. Maybe he even touched on some La La Land success like his Netflix rival star Bojack Horseman. And unable to fill the void that was left with his early accolades, he turns to this Dracula gang for some magic pills to chase the dragon. Through his hallucinations and bad trips, we could find out what really happened to Ben and exactly why he feels responsible for his death. At the Chicago Comic Con and Entertainment Expo, Irish actor Robert Sheehan, who plays Klaus on the show, said he'd absolutely be up for a Klaus spinoff. Nothing has been confirmed on a live-action spinoff, though, and the regular season timeline hasn't been renewed for season three. Since the show takes 18 months to complete end-to-end -end, and with COVID-19 slowing down film and TV productions, we're probably going to have to wait until at least 2022 to see what's up with the Sparrow Academy. There's no virus preventing us from laying back and surfing the possibilities with our imaginations, though. The Umbrella Academy Season 3 – What's in Store for the Seance? We believe that the series could head in an interesting direction for Klaus, as his cult will have had 56 years to grow without him. And he, having left Kichi in charge, look for them to find their profit in 2019 and give him a piece of their mind, and perhaps offering the demigod that abandoned them as a sacrifice for leaving them with only the immortal words of the 1990s boy band, the Backstreet Boys. We're gonna bring you the flavor! We're gonna show you how! Since they have affected the timeline, it is possible that Dave could be alive here. Possibly afflicted with PTSD and in his 70s, this war vet could hold a piece of Klaus's heart and make him one step closer to being whole again. And since Season 1 was based on the graphic novel The Apocalypse Suite and Season 2 on Dallas, Season 3 will probably be loosely based on Hotel Oblivion. There we will see our hero at an even lower rock bottom, prostituting his ability to communicate with the dead to help the Mothers of Agony motorcycle gang find treasure in exchange for pharmaceuticals. After a violent shootout with some rivals, Klaus's captors are left severely injured and Klaus takes this opportunity to say goodbye, leaving them for the vulture. He travels to the Mothers of Agony safe house and gets into the heavy stuff, allowing him a brief word with Sir Reginald. The barely alive gang leader tracks him down and leaves him for dead in the house's trash heap, evening the score. He's picked up by a cloaked hero and brought to the Huxley General Hospital. His savior is revealed to be a mummified Ben. After a familial intervention, he gets well enough to go to war with Dr. Terminal, whom you may remember as Harold Jenkins from Season 1. Their backs are against the ropes in this fight until they get saved by another superhero family, who remind the Academy an awful lot of themselves. Like the first two seasons, season three will probably be a mishmash between the comic book lore and a whole new artistic vision, hopefully with some new and cool characters. We just hope that Klaus Hargreaves gets a little bit more of the spotlight than everybody else. You gotta admit, the guy kinda knows how to handle it. Klaus's wild ride has been just like a roller coaster, bringing us higher than high and dropping us to the lowest of lows. No matter where he goes from here, our eyes will be on the seance. Where do you think Klaus's story will go from here? Are you going to buy his comic on September 16th? Who else would you like to see have a spin-off? The Box? Let us know in the comments below and like and subscribe for more from The Gamer.
Adieu, and as Klaus's left hand would say, goodbye.